Hello, this is Big Girl Diary. Forgive me for not giving you the proper introduction. Let's get into the thick of it. The Ukraine-Russian war, there is so much that is not being told and there is more that meets the eye. There are reasons why President Zelensky became president. He has no, mm, how can I say, political background. He was an actor and comedian, dancer and singer. He was put, he was made to be president for several reasons uh, with the backing of an exile oligarch that wanted to come back into the Ukraine and did things to make Zel President Zelensky president. And there were also U.S. Hmm, U.S. backing, and I believe I would like to call it a black site that was located in Ukraine, run by, you know, the FBI. I'm not the FBI, but but the uh, alphabet agencies that run in the U.S. And President Putin, why? he decided to invade. So there are a lot of plates that are working here. And I'm only gonna to touch on a couple and I may do more videos depending on if you're interested in it. Let's get into the thick of it. President Putin has his reasons for going into the Ukraine. You have the, the U.S. had the CIA that had the a biochemical lab in the Ukraine, close to the Ukraine, Ukraine that were making viruses, viral, bio viruses. And Putin got word of it and had to put a stop to it. So the U.S. had a lot to do with it, along with an oligarch, Igor Kolomoisky, who backed Zelensky and, and put him, installed him as president. He won the elections, but he manipulated it, in my belief, to where he would uh, become the president of the Ukraine, in which there was a lot of fighting between the Ukrainians, Ukrainians and the Russian Ukrainians the Ukrainian Ukrainians are more um, very liberal, globalist, pro-Europe in the culture. The Ukrainian Russians are conservative and not into those things. They're very conservative, very religious, and they separated themselves from that, which caused the 2013 internal fighting in the Ukraine at that time, and, and it had never, it hadn't stopped, but it gotten to the point to where it has become so outrageous. Now, the U.S. part, you had um, the Undersecretary of the United States, Victoria Nuland. She was the one that was instrumental in this. Now, NATO and now U.S. and NATO did a simulation on could they start a war and not get NATO sucked into it and basically want to know how many people could, would die. And in their 2019 simulation showed that over a billion people would die. It would escalate. Putin would go nuclear based on their simulations during the <coughs> 19 simulations, what was let loose in in uh, the latter part of the year into January that took over the world when everything was closed down. Now, Zelensky pushed Putin over the edge because by him being president and him having the background that he does, whatever his lifestyle is, I don't know, but I only know what he portrays through video. This was at Putin's back door and Putin's like, okay, enough is enough. I, I can't do this.
So he invades to take over Ukraine, to bring, to get rid of the terrorists, the neo-Nazis, which the Ukraine is a hotbed for it. And the U.S. trained um, Ukrainian groups at uh, like uh, Oz, uh, Ozkov and other military groups that were militias and then became a part of the military in the Ukraine. So there is a hot bit of uh, neo-Nazism that Putin wants to eradicate because he doesn't believe in it. And plus, the, uh, plus Russia was against Germany. Germany put a lot of that out, a lot of the racism racist organizations and racial groups that infiltrated the world. Putin's fighting against that, so Putin's not for that. Now, now that there's a propaganda war in the U.S., it's all pro-Ukrainian, which I have no dog in a fight. However, I'm just reporting it. But I notice I only hear one side. So I have to research outside of the US in order to get information. Now, what's not being said, well, actually it is being said that Putin is resurrecting a lot of the churches that the communist Soviet Union busted up. They did not want religion. They brought forth atheism, atheism to Russia. Putin, Vladimir Putin, Putin is most definitely a religious man. Now, Vladimir Putin holds the name, and I'm going to give you a little bit of history here, holds the name of a Turkish, a, a, a a Turkish, okay, a Turkish emperor was fighting against a lot of the, oh, let me see, back in 18, I'm sorry, 988. I can't remember the emperor's name, but of the Khazarian Empire, the Khazars over there in Turkey that goes up to Russia. That's just what it is. And he was fighting and he needed Vladimir. And Vladimir joined his group and conquered the, uh, the warring tribes and backed them off. And, and the emperor gave Vladimir his sister, Irene, in marriage. From there, they went to Russia to establish another, how can I say, um, another place like Vatican. You have two, because um, Constantine had two places like Vatican, two popes. The unorthodox pope, which resides in Rome, and the and the Orthodox that resides in Turkey, Constantinople, which we know nowadays as Istanbul. However, when Istanbul was dying down and you had the Muslims coming in, fighting and taking over and successfully taking over, by that time they went north to Moscow, which is on seven mountains. Look that up, it's in your Bible. Now, Constantine had made a three, what is it called? A three-headed eagle. Rome was one, one head. The other head was Istanbul. The third head was Moscow. At some point, the head, the, the eagle head of Moscow laid down but now it's rising back up. Look into your Bible 
in Second Ezra, it will speak of that. This is all biblical. All biblical and um, I'm not going to get biblical on you, but those of you who know your Bible, who know your um, Apocrypha, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't and you want to understand, make sure you look this up. Uh, on that note, if you like my content, please like and subscribe. If you agree or disagree, put it down in the comment section. Most of all, thank you for stopping by.